y'all. So before we get into this Dior Saddleback tutorial, I would like to shout out Silvex Jewelry for gifting me a couple of items. They are a personalized jewelry company. So you can get any type of jewelry item that they offer in any name that you want. And I actually got two necklaces and a pair of earrings. Um, one necklace has my daughter's name, Lulu. The other one has my name. Um, Whitney and Old English Letters. They are all gold plated and you have the option of how you would like your jewelry to be plated. This is great for people that have allergies like me. I can't really wear fake jewelry but I can wear some plated jewelry and these have not caused me any issues. So I would like to say thank you to Sovex for gifting me these items and you guys should check them out in my description box because they're actually having a Black Friday sale. So pick up you guys some items. These things look really cute inside your wardrobe and I'm just loving what I got. All right, so let's get into this. For this Dior Saddleback tutorial, I actually did some research on um, a couple of different options that I can make for this bag. Some bags had piping, some bags didn't, some bags had um, seams on the edges, some bags were raw, like the denim one. Um, I found a knockoff version of the bag and I thought that looks pretty cool. That's something that I'm really going to incorporate into my pattern, but I really like this quilted version and that's the one that I decided to do. What I really liked about this version of the Dior purse was that it had the piping on it. Yeah, I just like the piping style, but I decided that I wanted to be um, faux leather and incorporate the piping. All right, so for your materials, you're going to need about 60 inches of faux leather, um, denim, whatever type of fabric that you decide to use as the outside of your purse. And then you're going to need a third of a yard of lining fabric. Um, I would suggest anything that's easy to clean. I just use basic old bag lining, but you can use any type of lining that you want in any type of color. I decided to get black. And then you're gonna need a third of a yard of bag stiffener. This probably costs about like $8 if you're in a fabric store. Use a coupon so that you can get it for cheap because you're only gonna need a little bit of this. Next, you're gonna need a seven inch zipper. I could not find a zipper that had um, a regular stop at the end, so I got a separating zipper, but it's okay because you'll cut it off. For your thread, you're going to need a heavy duty thread. I decided to use outdoor thread. And then you're going to need a walking foot piece. If you're using leather or faux leather in this tutorial or a vinyl, I would suggest buying a walking foot piece because it grabs the fabric and helps the fabric move through your machine. It's really easy to use once you actually get the piece. If you don't have this piece, it's gonna be a little hard to do this tutorial. If you're using a thick fabric like vinyl, faux leather, denim, etc. All right, so if you're using a thick fabric like I am, you're gonna need a heavy duty needle. I'm using leather needles for this tutorial. You're gonna need one inch D rings. And then you're going to need some dog leash hooks. This will be in the purse section in your fabric store. They might be named something else, but you just need hooks for your crossbody strap. And then I'm going to use some big rings for the D on the Dior purse. You can use whatever you want. These are some button studs that are screwable. I need this for a certain part of the bag. All right, next you're going to need some magnetic snaps. These ones have like tabs on the back of them. So you'll need this for your back so it can stay closed. And then you're going to need some cording. Uh, I found these cording inside the upholstery section of the fabric store. And I really like the rope one that's skinny. Then you're going to need some Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks. These ones are good for fabric and a hot glue pun, of course. You will also need some super glue, and I got Loctite because it was good for leather holding. Well, holding leather together. Ooh, that's a tongue twister. Yeah, so I'm just opening up the package right now to show you what it is. This one's a liquid form. They have a gel form too, but I was okay with using liquid, and I found this in Home Depot. And then you're gonna need some matte acrylic paint so that you can finish the edges of your straps because they're gonna be raw. Um, if you can go to a leather store and buy the correct like edge paint then that'll be great too 
These are some clips for sewing because you cannot use pins on leather or faux leather because they'll show the holes. So I would suggest buying this. I'll leave this link down below and in my description box for our Amazon link for this because it was only like $6 for a pack of 200. I'll leave a link down below for you guys. So right here is just a clip of me testing out um, the stitch length and the tension on my machine. I suggest you do this if you do have leather or denim or something like that so that you're not messing up your bag because once you have holes in it, it's a wrap. So do a test piece on your machine before you start this tutorial. All right, so right now I'm just showing you all of my um, pieces that I cut out from the pattern and make sure that you mark all your markings onto your fabric so that you're not confused of what's the center or where things need to be placed. And then I'm actually showing you two sets of these um, bottom bag and bottom side pieces. You only need one set. I don't know why I have this clip. I cut out too many, but just ignore that. Just follow how many pieces you're supposed to have based off the pattern. And I will have the pattern linked down below for you guys to purchase so that you can follow along on this tutorial. But yeah, right now I'm just showing you all the pieces and on the pattern, it'll tell you how many pieces that you need to have. This is the back stiffener piece that I was mentioning that you only need a little bit. This is the only part of that stiffener you need. And this is kind of where it's gonna be placed once everything is sewn together just so that it gives your bag um, some hardness so that it keeps its shape. And the piping will help with that too, but the bag stiffener is really the star of the show. All right, right here is some of the lining pieces that I'm just showing you really quickly. Yeah, I don't know why I'm showing you guys the pieces. I guess I just don't want anybody to be confused about what I'm sewing, but yeah. Just showing you all the pieces. The pattern will be linked down below. These are some of the strap pieces that you're gonna have to cut out. On the pattern, there is a section of like just strips that you need to cut out and it's labeled how long and how thick you need to have them. All right, now we're ready to start this tutorial. We're gonna do all our tiny bag pieces first. Right now I'm showing you your bottom bag pieces and we're just gonna sandwich them together um, right side out and pin them on the inside and sew that at a one fourth seam on. When you're done sewing the one fourth seam allowance, your piece should look something like this. And right now I'm just checking to see if the tension was right and that my seams are actually stuck together and it looks like everything looks good and this is what your piece should look like too um, once you're done sewing that edge. All right. All right, now you need to grab your top side bag pieces and you need to pin them to the edge of your bottom bag piece that you just created. Um, right now I'm just showing you where it should be pinned and be placed. And if you see like a second version of this somewhere in the corner, it's because again, I cut out too many. I was still trying to figure out the process of this tutorial. But yeah, so you just sew that at a one fourth seam allowance like I'm showing you here. All right, after you added that top piece to the bottom of the bag, we are now going to try to pin our seam allowance going upward and then we're going to do a top stitch on this piece on both ends um, because we want our bag to have like a clean looking finish. Um, yeah, so we're just going to top stitch it. Right now I'm showing you where you should top stitch it. I did mine at like a 1 8 from the edge. It's really up to you how you like your bag to look. Once you're done sewing that piece, I just want you to put it down because we're gonna move on to finishing up the pocket piece. We're just gonna finish the edge of it. Um, you just fold it over at a 1 4th seam allowance and then you would stitch it at a 1 8th seam allowance um, on the edge. And this is how it should be pinned. And then you just make a top stitch seam on it so that it has a clean finish too. I really hope that made sense to you guys because it's really hard to do voiceover saying stitch and top and blah, 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 all at one time. All right, so this is my cording piece. I'm just showing you an example of what we're about to make. And I'm going to use my harder cording 
for this example i actually used the rope one later on and i decided that this was too thick for me again it's really up to you and your preference i wanted a more smaller cording but yeah all right so right now i'm just showing you that i'm putting the cording in the middle of your um cording strip that you cut out and you just sandwich it in the middle and pin it down on the side when you're done doing this you're going to have to sew super close to the cording that you put in there and i would suggest that you change your pressure foot or your foot on your sewing machine to a zipper foot so that you can get as close as possible and this is what the zipper foot should look like everybody's sewing machine should have that and you see that it gets you super super close to the edge and i would suggest using an inch or more of the fabric because you need something to pull on um, it's really hard if your strip is too small and this is what it's going to look like when you're done sewing super close to the edge nice and professional when you're done with that you just put it to the side and now we're going to work on our accessory strips so right now I have four pieces cut out and I have two pieces of the stiffener cut out and we're just going to sandwich that stiffener into our leather strip pieces and you will need to pull out your hot glue gun for this because we're going to hot glue these pieces together first before we sew them. Um, it's better to use stiffener because those little like strips coming out of the bag, they're really hard and they have to hold hardware Well, one of them has to hold hardware and I tried it without the stiffener and the, the leather started like twirling. It started twisting up. So the stiffer stiffener helped it keep its shape. So I would suggest using that, but yeah. So right now I'm just showing you that I am hot gluing the stiffener to one side of the leather and I'm putting it directly in the middle. You can eyeball it if you want to. It's, it's not really gonna make a difference if it's perfect or not. Just make sure that it's in the middle as close as possible and then you will hot glue the other strip on top. Once you're done with the first strip um, hot glue together, you will just repeat the same thing for the second one. So once you're done hot gluing your strips to look like this and then you are going to sew around the edge at a 1 8 seam and you're just going to sew it around to finish the edges of this. On one of them you actually need to curve the edge and the reason why you need to curve it is because one of the strips have a curve on it the other one is just straight that holds the D. And on your pattern it actually will have where the curve is supposed to go so you just mark that on your fabric if you want to with a pen and you just stitch over that. When you're done sewing it should look something like this and you'll just need to trim off some of the edging a little bit so that it looks a little bit more clean and neat just in case you got off your line that you had and trimming it will make it look a little bit more professional because yeah, it just does. So this is what the pieces look like and then you need to grab your acrylic paint and just paint the edges because I don't know what color your um, leather will have but mine was gray on the other side so I just wanted it to be a matte black so that my purse can look as clean as possible. Alright, so you remember when we had those super long one inch strips? Well, you're actually going to need to make some three inch strips and finish the edges just like we did for the accessory pieces. And this is what I'm showing you in my hand right now. Um, they're three inches and you sew, the same, you sew it the same way as we just did the previous um, strips. And you don't need to put stiffener in it because they need to hold the D-rings. Sorry that I don't have a clip of me doing that. It's just I lost some of the footage, but you will have the pattern pieces and explains what that piece is for. Yeah, so now I'm just attaching the D-ring and the hoop um, to these pieces and I'm just clipping them where they need to stay. 
and then I'm going to stitch those pieces closed. All right, so just to let you guys know, I'm using my walking foot on majority of this tutorial. I don't think I mentioned it in the beginning, but yeah, I would suggest that you use your zipper foot for this part to sew the edges of your accessory pieces because it was really hard to get this through my walking foot because the metals were hitting against each other. Um, you can also hand stitch this too if you want to. I just don't have the tools for me to hand stitch this thick fabric all together but this is what it looks like once you have your stitched pieces and you can paint the edges of the fabric on this too if you like i'm going to hot glue these two pieces together um just flipping the extra fabric up so that it's like one huge like stack together i don't really know how to explain this but you can see what i'm doing inside the video I'm just hot gluing the edge and flipping it in and I'm just gonna pin these and put these to the side because we're gonna need this later on. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the body bag itself, the body of the bag itself. You see these two pieces right now, we're actually gonna join those two curves together. So you're gonna need to sandwich them together, right sides together, and then pin the edge of those curves together. On your pattern, you'll actually have some notch marking so that you can match where it's actually supposed to go i didn't have mine on here at this point i put the markings on later um yeah so just march mark your notches and match it together and then you're gonna sew that at a one fourth seam allowance okay so when you're done sewing it should look something like this and you'll just need to clip the curve a little bit so that your fabric will lay down flat do not cut through your seam that you just made just cut close to it and clip the leather pieces a bit so they can lay flat like this all right so when you're done clipping i would suggest that you move all of your seam allowance going towards that little curve and it's a little bit hard to pin this um yeah you see where I'm pinning it. I'm just pushing all of my seam allowance forward and pinning it down. And you're going to need to top stitch this section too at one eighth. All right. So when you're done doing that, it should look like this all nice and clean. The next step is that we're gonna add our bag stiffener to this piece. And I just centered mine in the middle. Um, just make sure that you cut yours so that it's in the middle of your bag. It's okay that you see that middle hole in the middle. It's okay if the stiffener is on there, just on the edge of your, the outside edge of your bag. Make sure that your stiffener is not touching that because we do not wanna sew through stiffener and your piping and your other bag pieces it's going to be too thick so you need to cut away your stiffener so that it's in the center of your like body bag piece just just do what i'm doing in the video <laughs> when you're done hot gluing the bag stiffener to your body bag piece this is what it's going to look like if you want you can iron this um, I would just suggest hot gluing it. It's a little bit easier um, and then you're not going to burn your vinyl or your faux leather. You then can put this piece to the side because now we're going to work on our bag flat pieces. You need to take the two pieces like I'm showing you here and sandwich them um, right sides together. And then you need to grab your piping that we made earlier and you need to sandwich those things together. And I'm just going to show you how I'm pinning it. I'm pinning all the seam allowances together. Um, you'll just feel that your piping is on the edge. And yeah, so I'm just going to show you guys how I'm pinning it. So when you're 
you're done pinning those three pieces together, you will need to sew this close to the piping edge as possible. It should be a one fourth seam allowance, but just try to get as close to that piping as possible. And if you miss a section, you can just flip it on the right side out, see where you're missing and just go over that little section um, again. Just make sure that you get your piping as close to the edge as possible. And you'll know when you don't get it that close. So right now I'm just showing you that I'm flipping it inside out to see um, if everything's laying good. And I see that some of the areas are a little bit bulky, like where I'm, where I'm like pointing at right now. And you're gonna need to flip this back, back out. How do you say it? Flip it back out, <laughs> yeah. And you're gonna need to clip that edge and trim some of the fabric off because it's way too bulky and it's making the flap look weird. And that flap is gonna be in the front of your bag. So you want it to look good. So right now I'm just trimming some of the edges and then I'm clipping my seam allowance, not clip, clipping through my seam, but just clipping the fabric so that it can lay a little bit better. And when I'm done with this too, I'm actually going to take my iron, which I did this off screen, but I just took an iron and I took like a t-shirt and I laid a t-shirt over this piece and put my iron on high and I just ironed out all the bulkiness so that it would lay a little bit better than it is right now. So once you get all the bulkiness out, you're actually going to do a top stitch around that edge just so that we make sure that bulkiness does not start causing havoc later. Um, I did mine a little too close to the edge. I will pull it back a little bit, do more like a one four seam allowance, not an eighth. That's just my preference. It's really up to you. But yeah, right now I'm just showing you how my seam allowance looked. And as you can see, it's making things lay a little bit more flat. And so that's what our front flap is gonna look like. So now we're just gonna grab our body bag piece, our flat piece and our pocket piece. And we're gonna sandwich all of those things together like I'm showing you here. Make sure that you're, well, you'll be able to match up the pieces where they're supposed to go. But right now we're just gonna sew all these pieces together so that things aren't gonna be moving on us later. And we're just gonna pin them on the edge all together. And we're gonna sew this at a 1 8 seam allowance. You don't wanna sew on the 1 4 seam allowance yet. We will do that later. But yeah, so we're just gonna sew this at a 1 8 seam allowance like I'm showing you here. sewing the seam allowance it should look something like this and then we're gonna take our piping piece that we made earlier because you should have at least two piping pieces that you need to make and we're just gonna sew or we're gonna pin that piping piece all the way around the edge like I'm showing you here and then we're gonna sew that at a 1 8 seam allowance <music> Okay, so when you start getting to the meeting, the beginning of your piping, you just need to fold it over on top of one another. Um, I would center this in the center of the bag and you'll have a marking on your pattern of the center and you just need to stitch that at a 1 8 seam allowance. Um, I changed my machine to the zipper foot because it was easier to get um, around the piping. But yeah, we're just sandwiching all these pieces together slowly. I wouldn't suggest skipping these past two steps because if you try to sew everything together at one time it's really hard to do because things start slipping and you start missing things etc all right y'all i hope you're prepared because this is the hard part of this bag so you're going to take your bottom bag piece that we finished earlier and we're going to pin it in the center of the bag like i'm showing you here the center where the opening is and you're just gonna have to sew those curved pieces that are at the, the, yeah, I don't know what to call it. Just like the curved pieces, you're gonna have to sew that a little by little. Yeah, so as you're adding your bottom bag piece, I'm doing section by section. I'm pinning a little bit and I'm just gonna keep sewing the back bottom piece um, to the back, as you can see here. So 
I don't know if you should just silence me at this part and just watch what I'm doing in the video. Um, but I'm just continuing to sew and pin the bottom bag piece to the bag. And you'll see that the bag starts getting shaped the more you start sewing the bottom of the bag to the bag, if that made sense. Also, I would like to apologize because I don't have any um, overhead footage of me pinning my little sections because I don't know what happened with my footage. It just, it's lost, but you can see where I'm pinning and how I'm sewing stuff. Okay, so I just finished one half of the bag and right now I'm just showing you how things should look and I need to pin the other half of the bag close. And that's what I'm showing you guys right here. As you can see, the bag is getting shaped now. It's starting to look like a saddle bag. And you will just need to stitch this at a 1 4 seam allowance as close to your piping as possible, like I said before. And this part is what's really hard to um, sew with the walking foot. So I would just do whatever is best for you. I kept my walking foot because it allowed me to get all of these thick seams through. Um, I, but I just had to do one piece at a time one curve at a time, one section at a time, um, and not rush it. When you're done sewing this, you can put this down to the side because we're gonna start working on our bag lining pieces. So you're gonna gather all your lining pieces and these are all your pieces that you need, the zipper and all of your lining pieces that are marked on the pattern. Um, so right now we're just gonna start on the pocket piece and you are just going to need to mark your pocket piece just like it is on the pattern. We're going to mark the opening for the zipper right now. I will just mark the markings that are on the pattern because they're already done for you. Once you're done marking the pocket piece, you'll need to do the same thing on the body bag piece. Again, I would just mark where your markings are on the pattern and just transfer those markings to your fabric pieces instead of drawing them out like me because I already did the hard work for you. So this part of the tutorial should be really easy because it's laid out for you on the pattern. When you're done with your markings, you now need to take your pocket piece and lay it on the top side of your body bag piece and you just need to match up where the lines are meeting and then pin it. So you're only going to pin your top line and your bottom line. Do not pin on the sides. We're going to do something else with that. And right now I think I'm just marking my line a little bit darker. Actually that's not what I did. I pinned my bottom line. But right now I'm just showing you where you're supposed to sew. So you need to sew on that line only at the top and the bottom and do not sew on the sides. So once you're done sewing, it's very easy. Make sure that your attention is good on your sewing machine. Mine was really bad because I didn't change it for this thin lining. It was set for um, thicker fabric, but yeah. So right now we're just gonna mark the middle of our little section that we made. Again, that's already on the pattern for you. And then you need to mark out the triangles. When you're done marking out all of your triangles in the middle line, you need to cut that middle line and cut the edge of your triangles. Do not cut through your seam allowance that you previously made. Just cut out these little sections like I'm showing you here because you want to create the opening and then you just slide your pocket through the hole. Once you do this, it's going to be a little weird because things aren't laying flat, but you're going to need to pin your um, pocket pieces together. Everything should match up like I'm showing you here. I will really just follow what I'm doing in the video, pin it, and then I would suggest ironing it so that it's super flat. I'm keeping this at a normal speed so that you guys can see everything that I'm doing. Again, I'm just matching up where my seams and my seam allowance match and I'm just pinning it so that I can iron this part flat. Yours will look a little bit better than mine if you change your stitch um, tension. 
mine's is a little bulky because I was being lazy. Don't be like me. Once you have this ironed out, it's going to look a little something like this. Nice and flat, everything's staying in place, and you see that your pocket opening is looking a little clean. You don't see any raw edges. So now you're going to grab your zipper and you're just going to place that directly in the middle. And you're going to pin that down like I'm showing you here. Again, I'm keeping this at a more slower pace so that you can see what I'm doing and I will come back in later on to give you more direction. Once you have everything pinned and lined up, you are going to need to sew that edge of the opening that you made. I believe it's one eighth of a seam allowance. If you want to do it at one fourth, that's okay. Just make sure that you sew up the zipper tape and your pocket opening together. It should look something like this when you are done. And you'll need to flip your pocket piece upward and then you need to pin the sides. Only pin the pocket piece. Do not pin your um, body bag lining and zipper and the pocket piece all together. Only the pocket pieces. And you can sandwich in your zipper if you want to. Well, you have no choice because it's in the middle. But yeah, that's what I'm showing you right here. And on the edge where your um, back opening is, make sure you're only pinning the pocket lining pieces together. showing you guys where you shouldn't have pinned and where you should have pinned and you're just going to sew this at a 1 4 seam allowance too. You just do a regular old straight stitch. Actually all of the seams are a straight stitch. And you'll just have to pivot around as you go. It's very easy like once everything's pinned it's very easy to sew this. So your pocket piece should look like this all nice and done again i didn't change my um tension on it so your thing shouldn't look all bubbly and um rigid like mine it should lay a lot flatter but look how your zipper has like came together you actually have a pocket and this will be on the inside of your purse so right now you need to do your bottom bag pieces like we did earlier for the outside of the fabric it's the same thing um except for you don't have to top stitch anything I completed this piece off camera because it's the same as I showed you guys earlier. All right, so now that I have my bottom back piece all sewn up, you're gonna do the same thing like you did for your um, outer back piece. You just pin the two sides together and then you sew around the edge. Because it's a lighter weight fabric, it is way easier to do. And you can just do this in one full seam going all the way around. But yeah, right now I'm just going to pin my center seams together, my center sides together, and then I'm going to take my pins and pin it all the way around, and I'm going to sew it at a one four seam allowance. <laughs>
pinning it, your bag should look like, well, your bag lining should look something like this. All your pins, your thing is enclosed, and you just need to sew that at a one fourth seam allowance. The straight stitch, of course. done sewing that it should look something like this all finished and nice right now I'm just showing you how the bag looks you're actually gonna keep all the raw edges on the outside but this is what it would look like on the inside if you flipped it um, inside out or right side in however it goes yeah so I'm just showing you what the zipper looks like really um, from the inside of the bag but you want to keep all your raw edges on the outside because we're going to grab your bag that you created earlier the um, outer part of the bag and we're going to flip this right side out after you flip it right side out i would suggest that you um iron it a little bit again put a t-shirt over it put it on high heat and just iron it out because flipping it out it kind of took away the smoothness um, to the bag so yeah i would suggest ironing it at this point your bag should look a little something like this look how it's coming together you're really starting to see the saddle bag look yeah so you need to take your accessory piece that has your hoop or your letter that you bought attached to it and you need to place that in the center of your bag there is a marking on your fabric and on your pattern where the center is and you just need to center it find out how long you want that piece to go and then you need to pin it i'm using a dior bag i found on pinterest um, as an example of how long i need it to be this was more of like an eyeball thing i didn't want it to be too long and i didn't want it to be too short and once I figure out where I wanted it to be placed, then I just cut off the extra and then I'm going to pin it in place. And this is how it's supposed to look. You then need to take that extra accessory piece that had the curved edge and you need to figure out where you need to place it um, on your bag flap because this piece is going to be attached to the bag flap only. And right now I'm just eyeballing it, making sure that it's right. Um, also, I would say that you need to make sure that you're placing this in the right direction because I sewed this going the opposite direction and um, I had to take it apart and redo this whole thing because again, once you start putting holes into the leather, it shows. So I actually had to redo my entire flat piece and this accessory piece. Um, so just make sure that you're placing it how it's actually supposed to be placed and pinning it in place. setting all your pins um, for your accessory pieces you need to add your side accessory pieces the ones that are going to hold your straps you are going to have to hot glue them or um, super glue them to the bag if your um, fabric was not as thick as mine I'm pretty sure you'll be able to put this into your sewing machine and sew it down but because I have that walking foot and because the stiffener um, was so complicated for me to get it on my sewing machine, I just had to hot glue this and I plan on hand stitching it on my own free time so that it can have like a seam on it. But yeah, I would suggest just skipping the whole hot glue part and just um, using the super glue to put these pieces down. The super glue works very, very well. I still have my piece of super glue super glued i haven't hand stitched it yet and it's holding up um it's holding up well so yeah it's really whatever your preference is but right now i'm just showing you where i am hot gluing things <music>
next part is really up to you. I decided to hot glue um, this accessory piece down just a little bit on the edge. I don't know why I did that. I don't know what I was thinking, but I hot glued it. You don't have to do that. It'll, well, actually, I do know why I did that. Um, I hot glued these pieces down because it's so short. That piece is so short to stitch that it's just better if it was hot glued and not moving around. Because once my pin is gone, I lose my placement. So I would suggest that you do hot glue those pieces down um, your strips that you do have. Just in case if you remove the pins, it's not moving all over the place. Because like I said, my accessory piece that had a curved edge, it actually moved and it went in the wrong direction. Okay, so once you're done sewing down those accessory pieces, it should look like this. Clip off any extras that you need. As you guys can see, I'm hot gluing my side accessory pieces down because the hot glue just was not doing it. It was coming up and once I hot glued it down, it worked very well. Um, you might have saw the clip where I had the orientation wrong on that one accessory piece. I actually fixed it off camera. But anyway, this is what your bag is supposed to look like. So far, we are almost done. We just need to add the lining and we need to make our strips and we need to finish the edges of stuff. So as you can see, you actually have an inside pocket um, inside your flap and you have an outside pocket. I don't mind having that inside pocket because you can actually hide your phone and stuff like that. Um, if you want to, you can hot glue that closed. It's really up to you. I'm deciding to keep mine, but to make sure that my flap isn't flapping all over the place, I'm going to use button studs. You can totally skip this part and just hot glue that whole flap to the um, bag part if you want to. I didn't want that. So you need to grab an awl because you're going to have to pierce holes into this fabric. So you need to pierce a hole through the flap and your bag body um, as I'm showing you guys here. And once you get your two holes in, then um, you just put the screws on. So I'm just gonna not talk on this part. It's easier if I just show you guys what I'm doing. So just watch the screen and see what I do. And before I get off from talking, um, we're doing this part first before you put your lining in so that all your seams are enclosed and you don't see any of the ugliness. And I didn't like how the outside of the button stood looked. So yeah, I didn't want you to see that it was screwed in. Just I just wanted it to be like a little touch to the back. So while I'm putting the button studs into the bag and screwing them on, before I start screwing it, I decided to put a little bit of hot, well not hot glue, some super glue on just to make sure that the studs do not come out because once the stud comes out and it gets lost, you'll have a hole in your bag and that's not cute. So I had to grab um, a screwdriver so that I can screw this in. I just put a little bit of hot, why do I keep saying hot glue? I put a little bit of super glue and I just screwed the stuff on like I'm showing you here. And I repeat the same thing for the other side. All right, so this is what your bag will look like so far after you have your studs in starting to really come together now and now you're gonna have to add your lining into your bag so right now you're just gonna sandwich that into your bag it's really easy um, as long as you have all your markings and match all your markings up on that inside opening together everything should lay how it's supposed to lay and then you're just going to pin that entire edge closed with your pins <music> Once you're done pinning that, you need to sew that edge at a 1 8 seam allowance. Again, it is really hard to sew this on your walking foot, so I changed mine to my zipper foot and it was a little bit easier. And if you're not able to sew this, you can always um, hot glue that edge close together. Um, yeah, just it's really hard to sew this part of the bag because of the um, stiffener. Just take your time and be patient on these certain sections of the bag because they will really try you, but the results will be something that you want. So right now I'm showing you guys that the lining is attached. I'm clipping off all of my threads. That little section that I have 
clipped, it actually did not catch. So I'm just going to hot glue that piece together and then we can move on to the next part of the bag. All right, right now I have the strip for the bag opening. I would suggest that you fold over the edge at a 1 4th seam allowance and then stitch it before you do this part. I wish I would have did that on mine, like finish the edge first and then took the hot glue and the um, super glue and added it to this but because it was so hard to stitch this opening closed. I decided that I would just hot glue it and I will hand stitch it later. Again, if you don't want to hand stitch, I would suggest finishing the edge first with the stitch and then hot gluing it on there so that it'll already look like it's finished. But right now, I'm just showing you guys that I'm just gluing it around that opening. Um, if you do use this, this Loctite glue, it smokes a little bit once you put it on the back side of your faux leather or yeah it just smokes a little bit but i actually just glued one side and then i went back once i was done with that and i glued the other side i did it in steps so that i wasn't getting the super glue all over my purse because once that super glue is on there it's a wrap it's not moving nowhere it's not coming off so just take your time with this part <music> you guys i hope you're as excited as i am look how your saddlebag is coming together so we're really almost finished we just now need to finish the straps off camera i um put the magnetic snaps in i did have footage but i don't know what happened maybe my camera turned off while i was trying to put it together i don't know but you can just follow the the directions that are on the magnetic snap um like packaging or you can always find a tutorial here on YouTube where how to like add magnetic snaps. The only thing that I would say is that you only put it on the um, the inside layer, not the outside layer of your flap. That's the only thing I can tell you guys because I don't have that footage. So right now I'm just showing you guys um, how I'm making the um, bag strap, like the handheld bag strap. You have to cut out your pieces like I tell you on the pattern and then you fold in the seam allowance um, to the inside and you just follow the, um, the middle line guide and just hot glue the seam allowance together. So this part is really easy. You're just hot gluing the seam allowance, um, pushing it towards the edge and then once you're done hot gluing, you are going to fold it in half again and put pins so that it's closed and you will finish the edges um, on both sides at a one inch seam allowance. So you're just top stitching it at a one eighth seam allowance and I will show you what that looks like a little bit later. And you will need to do the same thing again for the um, crossbody strap piece that you had to cut out. This part's really easy. Um, yeah. And once you're done hot gluing the seam allowance to the inside, you will fold this in half too, and you will pin it on the edge and sew both of the sides at a 1 8 seam allowance. handle will look like I'm just showing you guys what it will look like as a finished product and then you will just need to attach this to the sides of your accessory piece that's on the back like I'm showing you here I'm not going to completely sew mine on I'm just going to show you guys where it needs to be pinned and make sure you pin your seam allowance to the inside um I just personally didn't like how the strap looked it, it's just not my thing maybe I made it too thick I'm not really sure. I might make a skinnier one um, and I want to find some dog leashes that are small so that it can be attached to a dog leash and then go on the hook. I just didn't like how it looked. I really like how the crossbody part looked. But I'm just going to show you guys where you can pin it if you do want to handle on your bag. 
and yeah and you would just sew those two seams down um yeah that's really it you would just sew those two seams down <laughs> Okay, so as you guys see, I'm taking off the straps because I didn't like how it looked. I really need to find some smaller dog leashes to put those on and then I can have a handle bag strap on my purse. But right now I'm taking the crossbody pieces and I am just sliding them through the dog leash um, hooks and I'm just going to place a pin and then I'm going to stitch those um, sections closed. So I'm hooking the um, dog leash hooks onto the actual bag itself just to see where it goes and then I'm going to try it on. Okay you guys, so um, like I was saying in the, the voiceover, um, this is, I make the strap 44 inches, that's what it is for the pattern. Some people might not like their crossbody bags to be up this high. I wanted it to be this high because I want it to be like right here, um, right on my waist. So I need to cut off all of this extraness um, so that it fits like this. I don't want mine way down here. That's just my preference. If you want it um, shorter, it's up to you. Um, and you can actually buy like the little strap adjusters piece that you want and you can put it on here if you want the versatility. I don't care about it. I can always make another strap um, if I want to in the future. So yeah, I'm just gonna stitch these two pieces and then I'm gonna be done. I don't want the handle part of my bag. I never plan on wearing it like that. So I'm not gonna attach it, but I showed you guys um, where to pin and how to do it. If I do decide to wear a handle, I'm just gonna sew it on there and I'm probably gonna make a handle that's a little bit skinnier because I felt like it was too fat but that option is there it's too fat for me the option is still there for the pattern and this is what the bag looks like you know and i just open it and put my stuff in there bag looks like all done I had ironed it out to get all the little kinks and like bubbles out I really love this purse I'm gonna make another version maybe in velvet or something I don't know but yeah so this is what you guys bag look like I really hope you like this tutorial if you have any suggestions or anything that's helpful to anybody for the tutorial please leave it down below I am NOT a professional bag smith I, I'm figuring this all out. So let's help everybody out inside the description box. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I will see you guys in my next tutorial. Bye y'all.